2022 fall commencement is now open. Good evening. On behalf of the Tennessee Board of Regents, joined with the faculty and staff, I am pleased to welcome you all today to witness and to celebrate this special occasion with our graduating students. My heartfelt congratulations to all the graduates on your accomplishment. You did it. <laughs> this ceremony will be webcast and broadcast live on our website. It will be archived and can be viewed later also by going to the Cleveland State website. In order to help us facilitate this special event, we ask that all family and friends remain in the stands throughout the entire ceremony. We'd also like to request that you silence your cell phones at this time. Please remain standing as Dr. Willie Thomas comes to lead us in a moment of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Stone. Today is a momentous occasion in, in each of our lives, as well as in our families and your families. So before we proceed, we want to take a moment for reflection to consider all the hard work by students, faculty, and staff. To think about all of the people that supported you along the way, to imagine the many opportunities before you, and to consider all the blessings that brought each of us to this point of celebration and thanksgiving. Will you please join me in a moment of silence? Thank you. At this time, the national anthem will be performed by our Vocal Rhapsody Ensemble under the direction of Miss Andy Phillips. Will you please stand? Thank you. Thank you, you may be seated. As we begin this ceremony, I'd like to introduce members of the stage party. When I call your name, please stand to be recognized. Regent Danny Varlin from the Tennessee Board of Regents.
Dr. Cindy Reynolds, Vice President for Finance and Operations. Dr. John Squires, Interim Vice President for Workforce Development, Institutional Research and Advancement. Dr. Michael Stokes, Vice President for Student Services. Dr. Willie Thomas, Chief of Staff. Chris Mowry, Director of Information Technology. Lori Rowland, Chair of the Humanities Department and Associate Professor of Communication. Now for you graduates, most importantly, I want to recognize those individuals who have helped contribute to the success for, for your success this evening. First, I want to give our graduates an opportunity to thank the special family members, friends, coworkers, and all of those who have been a part of your personal support network and have encouraged you every step of the way. Graduates, please take this time to thank your family and friends with a big round of applause. Next, I want to give our graduates an opportunity to join me in thanking our amazing faculty and staff here at Cleveland State Community College. Our faculty and staff make every effort and go the extra mile to make sure our students come first and that they have the resources they need to be successful. Graduates, please take this time to thank the Cleveland State faculty and staff who have been a part of your educational journey. In addition to our national and state flag behind me, we have included four other fla flags from four other countries. These flags represent students who are graduating with us today from Canada, Croatia, Italy, and Togo. As you are aware, Cleveland State serves a five-county region, Bradley, McMinn, Polk, Meigs, and Monroe counties. For the fall 2022 graduating class, 84% of our graduates come from the counties within this service area. We anticipate awarding 125 associate's degrees and 102 certificates this fall. Our youngest graduate is 18 years old. And we're not gonna call this person out, but our oldest graduate is 64 years old. Cleveland State now has over 22,000 alumni who live and work across this country. Our honors program consists primarily of interdisciplinary curriculum, including multiple general education courses. These courses place more responsibility on the student to lead discussion and conduct independent research on the course's subject matter. Students are also expected to engage in extensive service to our campus and our community, to take leadership development studies and complete a self-directed capstone research project before graduation. In addition to earning an honors diploma by completing all requirements of the honors program, these students have earned the Presidential Honors Scholarship while at Cleveland State. Students are chosen for this prestigious scholarship 
based on high GPAs and ACT scores. And those GPAs are at least 3.5% with at least a 24 on the ACT. Please stand as I call your name. Amy C. Brown. Allie Elmore. Congratulations. The Honors College has identified several degree programs that are already challenging and rigorous and added an increased and added increased service responsibilities, a stronger relationship with research, intensive leadership training, and extensive presentation experience. The Honors Business Advanced Track requires that students take leadership development studies and complete extra service hours with organizations where they can practice the leadership techniques they have studied. Their capstone projects integrate research, reflection, public presentations, service, and leadership. Students, please stand as I call your names. April Amos. Brittany Collins. Elizabeth Godfrey. Brooklyn Gray. Davella Porter. Talisha Shane, Candace Tate, and Christopher Whaley. Congratulations. The Tennessee Valley Early College, or TVEC, is a partnership program between the college and local school systems designed to allow students to pursue college credit at the same time they are earning a high school diploma. We have one TVEC student graduating with us today. Mariah Brew, would you please stand and be recognized? Congratulations. Tonight, we are also recognizing those students who are members of the Omega Omicron chapter of Phi Theta Kappa. Phi Theta Kappa is the honor society that recognizes students for their academic achievement. These students have distinguished themselves through achieving between a 3.5 and a 4.0 grade point average. Their scholarly excellence is symbolized by the gold honor stole they wear with their cap and gown. We have 21 Phi Theta Kappans graduating this fall. Would all of the Phi Theta Kappa members of the fall, of the, of fall class of 2022 please stand to be recognized. Congratulations. We are also proud to recognize those students who serve our country in the military. These students are distinguished by their red, white, and blue tassels. Please stand as I call your name. Oscar Spruill. Elijah Waldrop. and Brandon Lee West. Thank you for your service. If you are a veteran, reservist, or active military attending today, we would also ask that you stand so we can thank you for your service.
this time, we are pleased to bring you greetings from the Tennessee Board of Regents. To do that, it is my pleasure to introduce our special guest and my very good friend, Regent Danny Varlin. Thank you so much, Dr. Sohn, and welcome to everyone. Um, thank you for allowing me to be here. Uh, appreciate it so much. So good evening to all of you distinguished faculty and staff, but most importantly to our graduates, their families, and all of the friends and people that are here with you today. I'm very honored to be with you in such an important day in your lives. On behalf of the 19 members of the Tennessee Board of Regents, I bring you greetings and our sincere congratulations. I know it is a proud day for you and your families. For myself and my fellow board members, it is a very gratifying day as well because being here with you today, seeing you awarded the degrees and the certificates you have earned is what makes our service on the board so rewarding seeing the proud faces of your loved ones, your parents, your families, your spouses, your friends, makes the work that we do at the Board of Regents so worthwhile. You are why we serve, you are why the board exists, and you are why Cleveland State Community College is here. Our chief responsibility as board members is to make sure that you have the best faculty, the best resources, and the best environment possible to learn and succeed. Thank you to the faculty and the staff for your devotion and dedication and hard work for these students. I also thank our new president, Dr. Ty Stone, for hitting the ground running this summer. I was privileged and honored to have served on the presidential search committee along with Regent Tom White from Chattanooga and Regent Emily Reynolds from Nashville, along with 15 other search committee members representing the students, the faculty, staff, alumni, and the broader community. Dr. Stone qu quickly proved herself to be a dynamic leader and a dear friend. Cleveland State is one of only four of the 13 community colleges in our statewide system to increase enrollment this fall. The college had the second largest growth in enrollment of new high school graduates in our entire system. Members of the class of 2022, I know it's been both a challenging time and a rewarding time for you. The pandemic directly affected all of us in our work, in our studies, and our lives. I'm awed by you and the faculty and staff adjusting so quickly and effectively to online and hybrid teaching and learning so that we could stay on course and you can graduate. You navigated so many hurdles that arose through your perseverance and resiliency and ability to adapt. Today is the reward for your hard work. Those same traits and characteristics will serve you well throughout your lives. You're better prepared now to respond to the challenges and, and disruptions and hurdles that inevitably arise in all our lives. But your time here included other historic moments for this college. Last year, the new Health and Science Center opened, the first new building at this college since the original campus was built in late 1960s. That's kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> the new McMinn County Higher Education Center opened in Athens, and the Monroe County Center in Venor opened as well. For those of you who took or taught classes in those new facilities, you know what a difference they have made. Cleveland State has established the first honors college at any Tennessee community college. I know that many of you have benefited from this new honors program. And Cleveland State has become even more of a source of community involvement and pride, not only here in Cleveland, but across Southeast Tennessee through its Community First initiative. But by far the most important news has been your success as students. Cleveland State has more than doubled its graduation rates in the last few years. The number of students completing degrees and certificates has reached record levels, and today you are part of that proud history. 
All of those help, things help Cleveland State be the very first College of the Year in the Board of Regents SOAR Awards in 2019, and your former president told everybody every single day about it. So. <laughs> and now the person that is the current winner tells everybody every day. It's a, it's a great, fun thing. Regardless of whether you're continuing, continuing your studies at a university or launching your careers, as of today, Cleveland State's your alma mater. You can be proud to say that you're an alumnus of this great college. But you know, your graduation today is a comma, not a period in your lives, and will cause ripple effects in your lives, in the lives of your families, in our, and in your community across time. You've built a foundation that will help the next generations achieve even more. So go out in the world with confidence, with humility, and with gratitude. Confidence in what you've learned and in your ability to persevere. Humility combined with pride in your accomplishments and gratitude to your families, your parents, your friends, the faculty and staff here, and everyone who has helped you succeed. On behalf of the entire Board of Regents, congratulations, best wishes, and thank you all the class of 19, of 19, 2022. I'm showing my age. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Regent Varlin, for your kind remarks. A few years ago, we began a new tradition to allow our distinguished staff and faculty members to serve as the speakers at the fall commencement. So we have two keynote speakers this evening. I am here to introduce you to our first speaker, Mr. Chris Mowry, Director of Information Technology, and also the recipient of our Distinguished Staff Award that is presented each year to an individual who has performed meritorious service to Cleveland State, above and beyond the expectations of the job. Chris Mowry began his Cleveland State career in 2006. Since that time, he has represented his department as being reliable, knowledgeable, and trustworthy with every aspect of his job. He has been instrumental to Cleveland State by providing a multiple of improvements to the OIT department. Because of his forward thinking, he ensures Cleveland State is as advanced as possible in technologies without limiting with limited funding and is constantly looking for ways to save money and stay within budget. He also seeks ways to improve technologies to assist the faculty and students with their teaching and learning experiences. He ensures the college is not at risk of data breaches and he communicates the importance of this to his coworkers, managers, and executive management. He is known throughout the Tennessee Board of Regents system for being a great resource of knowledge and is called upon frequently to provide guidance and input to our sister colleges. His experience, expertise, and dedication to the college is evident to all. At this time, I would like to welcome Chris Mowry to the podium. Thank you for the introduction. It is such an honor to be here today. My name is Chris Mowry, and I'm the Director of Information Technology here at Cleveland State. I've worked at the college for 16 years, and not once in that time did I expect to be standing in front of you all giving a speech at graduation. It's been at least two decades since I have needed to write a speech, and luck would have it that I get to deliver this one right before a faculty member who is also a speech and debate coach takes a turn on stage. <laughs> Fingers crossed that this one is at least worth a B. I'll be sharing a, free br a few brief thoughts, and I hope that you find something in them that resonates with you. Every one of you graduating today has a different idea of what is going to happen when you walk out of those doors. Some of you will continue your educational journey at a college or university here in East Tennessee. Some of you will use what you accomplished here to find a job halfway across the country. Many of you already have jobs, so graduation might mean that you get to enjoy more time with your family and friends now instead of spending your days trying to balance work and school. No matter what your goals are after today, I want to encourage every one of you to find something that sparks joy inside of you, something that makes you forget some of your worries and helps you to be more fulfilled in life. 
many of you have probably come across a quote attributed to Confucius, Mark Twain, or some unnamed old timer that goes something like this. Find a job you enjoy doing, and you will never have to work in a day in your life. Some of you may be fortunate and find that kind of passion at work in your career. I envy those who find their passion that way, but not everyone will have that experience, and there is nothing wrong with that. I enjoy my job, otherwise I would not have been here for 16 years, but it's my job, not my passion. I'll share something that Mark Twain really did say. There is probably no pleasure equal to the pleasure of climbing a dangerous alp, but it is a pleasure which is confined strictly to people who can find pleasure in it. I don't know many professional mountain climbers, but I do know folks who rush home after work so they can make it to High Point to practice bouldering after dinner, or bring their mountain bike to work so they can get to Enterprise South for a few miles on the trails before it gets dark. I know people who love nothing more than to have their hands in the rich soil of their garden, or to stand on the sidelines and coach their kids' soccer team. You may find it curled up on a stormy weekend lost in the pages of a good book, in the recording studio late at night listening to the final mix of your first EP, or sitting in a tree stand deep in the woods just before dawn breaks. But whatever you do, find that something that brings joy to your heart and be sure to carve out time for it. You may just find other parts of life benefiting from it as well. While finding a source of joy is something that everyone should experience, I believe there is something equally as important that everyone should not only find, but also share with others, kindness. Among those gathered here are people who practice different religions, people who belong to different political ideologies, people of different ethnicities, and people from different socioeconomic backgrounds. There are many ways we could separate those represented in this room, yet every person here has traveled through the same doors, physically or virtually, to get here today. All of those graduating and all of those who work at Cleveland State have walked through the same halls. We are all here together to celebrate those who are graduating and wish them well for the future. The next time you see a car attempting to merge onto I-75 in front of you going a little slower than you would like, or the next time you see someone holding a sign promoting a political candidate you don't agree with, or the next time you see someone pick up that last box of Little Debbie Christmas tree cakes at the grocery store, take a moment to think of this room. That individual could be here with you today celebrating the accomplishments of all of these graduates, including someone that you personally care about. And hopefully, that helps you afford them a little more of the kindness we all deserve. I'll close by quoting one of my favorite social media personalities and add a little twist of my own to it. Find your joy and share a little kindness. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, for those wonderful words of encouragement for our students. I'm here to introduce our second speaker, Lori Rowland, Chair of the Humanities Department's Associate Professor of Communication. She is also the recipient of the Distinguished Faculty Member Award that is presented each year to a faculty member who has performed meritorious service to Cleveland State. Lori Rowland came to the college in 2015. Since that time, her peer evaluations indicate a dedicated, positive instructor who leads engaging discussions and is very supportive of her students. Her student evaluations focus on her strong support and willingness to help students learn. She spearheaded efforts with her fellow communication faculty to incorporate inclusive text with an ADA component in the online course shells that all students use. She is one of the initial she was one of the initial pilots for a new initiative in Tennessee to use digital text as a way of reducing student textbook expenses. She has played a central role in the creation of the mass media, mass communications program, sorry, the evaluation of the music program, and the development of a new graphic design program, all with the intent of better meeting the needs and goals of our students. Under her leadership, the college's speech and debate team has won awards at every tournament since January of 2019, often competing against university teams. Most recently, they were ranked number one in the state. 
It is my pleasure to introduce Lori Rowland. All right, guys. As you heard, I'm the speech and debate coach, and I can tell you right now that I'm a nervous wreck. So if you would, and I do this with my students in my class, if you are able and safely able to do this, if you would stand up and stretch and breathe with me, it would really help. So if everybody would stand, that can. All right, stretch. Breathe in, hold, breathe out. Breathe in, hold, breathe out. Stretch it out, wake it up. And you all have just helped me tremendously. I appreciate each one of you. Please have a seat. When I think back to commencement speeches that I have heard in my life, and I've heard numerous ones, I usually don't remember what the speaker talked about except for one. One speaker talked about killing chickens. I don't want to leave you with that memory. So uh, I really talk about choices in my class, a lot about choices and how you communicate and what actions you actually take. As I look back, there are times that I can clearly see where my choices led to a good or a bad outcome, but not necessarily the outcome that I expected. One of the most pivotal choices I made was not one that looked like a life-altering one at the time. When I was in my freshman year at Berea College in Kentucky, I had ambitions to be a lawyer. But, as you just saw, I'm very shy and speaking in front of people is absolutely terrifying. And I wouldn't even speak up in class. And that's why we did breathing exercises up here so I could at least get some oxygen going. Anyway, I thought if I took a speech class, it would help. Yep, I went every day to class sick to my stomach that I was gonna to have to actually speak up. When it came time for my first speech, it was absolutely awful. I stuttered. I forgot my speech, I misquoted the college motto, and a bunch of other things. I don't even remember all that I did. At the end of that mess, my professor, Dr. Harry Roby, said it was really good, and he wanted me on the speech and debate team. I know that I look like a deer in headlights. But then he went on to say there was a tournament coming up and that he wanted me to go and compete. And I said, I'm busy. I didn't even know what day it was. Then he said it was that weekend and asked what I was doing. I said I had to go to Knoxville to sign insurance papers. Really, sign insurance papers, guys, in Knoxville. And he said, well, he would come and pick me up. I was caught in my lie. I had no car to drive down to Knoxville, and I didn't want to tell him I lied. So I found a ride to Knoxville. I was there for 15 minutes, and he picked me up and we drove right back up the interstate. <laughs> and I, I know that he knew that I fibbed. And I never said anything, and he never said anything. As we drove the two hours back up the interstate, he talked about many things, but there are three that I actually remember. The one about facing fear, one about choosing love and kindness, and one is following their passion. And believe it or not, Chris and I did not talk about this beforehand. <laughs> so, Dr. Roby asked why I was afraid of speaking in class. And I said, well, it scared me. And he said, well, yeah, there's two types of fear. There is a healthy fear and an unhealthy fear. The healthy fear keeps you alive. The unhealthy fear keeps you paralyzed. So a fear of jumping off of a cliff without a rope, healthy, very healthy. The fear of speaking, not healthy. When you put thought into what you are saying, especially public speaking, most of the audience wants you to do well because you're doing something that they fear as well and quite frankly, they're having to listen to you and really want you to, to at least be somewhat entertaining. But you have to face that unhealthy fear and step forward. 
in the end, you realize that it's not as scary as you thought it was and that you lived through it. As the drive went on, we chit-chatted. I found out that Dr. Roby and his wife had been married for over 50 years. And I asked him, how did he and his wife stay married for that long? Because divorce is so common and so easy. And he said that there are really good reasons for divorce, but every day he woke up and chose to love his wife that day. He chose to be kind to his wife that day. As I thought about that, I thought if I could take that attitude and spread it throughout all of my interactions, I could find the secret to happiness. And it works. Choose love and kindness over hate and rudeness. It makes others happy, but even more important, it makes you happy. Finally, Dr. Roby talked about finding passion in what you do. We were talking about law school, and he asked me if I was passionate about it. Nope, not really, but I thought I'd be good at it, and I could make some money. And he said, well, what do you want to do? And I had no answer. I had no answer for him. I went to law school. I hated it. I worked in critical care in the emergency areas of a large hospital as a researcher for Racing Horses Bloodlines, an editor for the Marriott Hotels, a marketing director for a small company, the owner of a synchronous bell and clock company, and an academic advisor. It wasn't until I was in my 40s that I finally found my passion in teaching. Find your passion. However, my parents' voice always echoes in the background, Leo and Beverly Bradshaw. Their voices are there and they say, do what you love and are passionate about, but whatever you do, make sure that you put a roof over your head and food on the table. So when Dr. Roby and I finally reached the college and picked up the rest of the team, we then drove to Indianapolis where I debated for the first time in my life at a huge tournament with hundreds of competitors, and I was terrified, but I did it anyway. I made it all the way to quarterfinals, and I was so proud that I was able to do all that without knowing what the devil I was doing, which is much like life. We do a lot of stuff that we don't know what we're doing, right? I live with these principles and pass them on to my students and now to you. When faced with an unhealthy fear, face it down and know that you are good enough. Life is about choices. Choose kindness and love for others and for yourself. Finally, find a passion in what you do, whether that's work or play, otherwise life becomes tedious. And one last thing I ask all my students on the day of class before weekend is, what are you going to do that's fun this weekend? Take a few minutes for the stuff that fills your soul and soothes your heart. Thank you and congratulations on your achievement. Be proud and choose wisely. Thank you, Laurie. We appreciate your remarks. Those were great and really inspiring. Now we're at the portion of the event that we've all been waiting for. Dr. Stone, I'm pleased to present to you the graduating class of 2022. As Vice President for Student Services, I certify that these students have fulfilled all the requirements set forth by the Tennessee Board of Regents and that they are entitled to receive the appropriate degrees or certificates. With the power vested in me by the Tennessee Board of Regents and the state of Tennessee, and upon recommendation of the faculty and administration of Cleveland State Community College, these candidates are hereby awarded an Associate of Arts degree, an Associate of Fine Arts degree, an Associate of Science degree, an Associate of Applied Science degree, or a certificate with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto.
now presenting candidates in the Honors College, Brittany N. Collins. Talisha Renee Shane. Elizabeth Ovita Godfrey. Davella Michelle Porter. Candace Marie Tate. Brooklyn Lauren Gray. April Chastity Amos. Christopher B. Whaley. Allie Rain Elmore. Amy C. Brown. Now presenting candidates in the Tennessee Valley Early College, Mariah Elise Brew. Now presenting candidates in Advanced Technologies, Noelle Nunana and Natalie. Marcus Anthony Stovall. Randy L. Schneck. John M. Hamilton. Devor Jurisic. Tyler A. Walsh. David Nicholas C. Buckner. Now presenting candidates in Arts and Humanities, Dakari Q. Taylor. Logan M. Cross. Now presenting candidates in Business, Austin Coy Moses. Lisa Sliger. <laughs> Mackenzie E. Johnson. Sarah B. Gilbert. Travis Michael Baldwin. Emily T. Martin. Destiny Caitlin Pence. Caitlin B. Halton. Delaney F. Swilling. Aliana H. Pimentel. Kaylee Lauren Brady. Lynette in Matos. Tyler L. King. Joshua Sky Weedman. Now presenting candidates in education, Sarah Grace Stansel. Yolimar E. Rodriguez. Dominique Nicole Maffet. Deborah K. Kill. Now presenting candidates in healthcare, Darian L. Sneed. Melinda Cheryl McLeod. Lydia Newbert. Olivia Salinas. Jillian Nicole Simmons. 
Cora J. Halcom. Christy Cranford. Kimberly Lindy. Daniel Nicholas Dorman. Alexandra C. Ama. Hannah Jane Fox. Addie Lee Strode. Kirby Miranda Gentry. Brittany Nicole Banks. Emony Yasmin Kemp. Brock Jamison Motter. Emily J. Bryant. Katarina Elizabeth Fay Moore. Melody B. Frank. Abigail Marie Rogers Barnett. Lauren Grace Page. Tabitha Lee Aaron Tinsley. Casey Webb. Elizabeth Westmoreland. Emerald Lee Valencia. Naib Stefano Viejas. Elizabeth Ann Russell. Lynette Michelle Wilkes. Now presenting candidates in social sciences, Madison H. Tate. Ashley Nicole Musicar. Nakota Alyssa Panther. Faith Nieves. Now presenting candidates in STEM, Riley Clinton Sneed. Bradley R. Hatcher. <laughs> Haley L. Winsler. Chantal Karen Blevins. Megan Burns. Jace N. Queen. Congratulations to these students and their families.
Now, I have one final test for our students, okay? And this will require your active participation and your careful listening. I have two questions. And for each question, I want you to stand if the question pertains to you. How many of you are the first in your family to earn a college degree? Please stand if you are a first generation college graduate. What you have done tonight is disrupted that cycle for the legacy of your children forever. Now, second question. Please stand if you have ever been told sometime in your past or if you've ever believed that you were not college material. You have proven to yourself and to all of those people that that was a lie. You can do anything you want to do. Congratulations. Now, all graduates, one more time, do me this favor and please stand. Now is the time to move your tassels to the left. You are now officially graduates of Cleveland State and the newest members of our alumni community. Congratulations to you. Couple more things here. So uh, the Cleveland State alum, uh, alma mater is both 55 years old and five years old. When the college was founded, a Cleveland State student, Francis Eaglehouse, wrote the lyrics of our alma mater. We have not found any records of it being used, at least in a few decades. In 2017, our own Karen Dale found the script and put it to music. It debuted at the kickoff of our 50th year celebration. We will now have the members of Vocal Rhapsody lead us in singing our college's alma mater, which is listed on your program card. Please stand for that.
This concludes our Cleveland State Fall 2022 commencement. Thank you so much for joining us. And once more, congratulations, graduates. We are so proud of you. Like our speakers, yes. Like our speakers, I encourage you to find your passion and choose kindness and love. American poet Ralph Waldo Emerson said, what lies behind us and what lies before us are all small matters compared to what lies within us. I hope you leave here with an appreciation for your time at Cleveland State and a commitment to make this a better world for succeeding generations. We look forward to the great things you will achieve. I wish you all the happiest of, ho of the holidays and a very bright and happy new year. Go Cougars.
somebody once told me.